I'm glad we got Vlad. Is he running in 2024, yes or no? Oh! <laughs> Welcome to the insurance dude, Vlad. Not, Not Vlad. Vlad. Boom! Boom! <laughs> this Your is amazing. This is Your amazing. Your intros never disappoint. There is not a podcast <laughs> out there that has better intros than you guys. We, we well, try thank very hard. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Vlad. Not Vlad. Vlad. Not, not to Vlad. your teacher. Vlad. Vlad. That's right. <laughs> I've been served 10,000 ads from Vlad, yet I managed to mispronounce his name when he yes. first came on <laughs> beforehand. In every, video, in every video, I start, hey, this is Vlad from the Insurance Sales Lab. So... Yeah. Way to Vlad's go, Greg. The lab. He's got old timers. Not all timers. Old. Old timers. Oh, old timers. Yeah. Uh, old timers? Yeah. Old timers. <laughs> well, welcome to the insurance dudes, Vlad. <laughs> you're on the hot seat uh, in the Vlad sandwich here between Jason and I. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, then you'll see that. If you're listening, then you can just visualize. Well, mm -hmm. dude. Let's let's go all the way back to um, NBA Live uh, to now. What got you in insurance? And tell us the story of uh, yeah, of I'm how glad. you how you help yeah. agents crush it. Yeah. Um, so the the short version is I was a Best Buy from the age like from from the time I was sixteen. I got a job there. I was one of I was the youngest employee there. Uh, and my goal was to always be number one in sales. There was this tracker at Best Buy. A lot of people don't know this, but I think Best Buy is still this way, but they track metrics on an, it also depends on the store that you work for, but on a daily basis and by departments, computer department, um, the video game departments, home theater departments. And it was always important for me to be number one. And we had a budget that was set for us by the corporate. Uh, and I just always wanted to, hit that target. So I went out of my way, read every book I could find, um, studied everything I could on, on sales and the technology that we were selling. So that was just always in my DNA to be the best in terms of sales. And I got promoted when I was like 19. I was 19 to be a, a supervisor in one of the worst performing stores in the entire country. And the reason they put me to be a supervisor in front, uh, to supervise like 20 employees in the computer department was because they wanted me to teach those 20 reps my sales process because I was like number one in a, a big territory. So they just said, look, if we can duplicate Vlad's sales process and have everybody hit the same numbers that I was writing at the time, then we should turn the store around. Long story short, um, we did that after like two years and all the credit went to the, the GM and the, the, the leadership. I remember getting corporate visits from the way top because our store went from being one of the worst performing stores to one of the best performing stores in all of Best Buy. And I was like, dang, the, the little guy like at the bottom never gets any credit. Uh, and it wasn't like even that that got me um, a little irritated. I was like, man, I'm working so hard, but I'm getting paid like 19 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour. Um, I want to make a lot more money. And I was looking at different opportunities. I was considering banking, real estate, and insurance was one of the industries that I looked into. So I, can't, I, I was recruited by a big captive company that we all know of. And they said, hey, be an agent. And I looked into their comp plan, everything checked out. But I went and started talking to insurance agents that were already agents in that, in, for that company. And all of them said the same exact thing. They said, Vlad, you can be great at sales, but finding good people to work for you is the biggest challenge. And most agents go into major debt their first year because they're figuring things out. They're hiring the wrong people. They're not using the right lead vendors. Um, you're just getting set up. So you're going to go into major debt your first year. Second year, you're going to break even because of the renewals. Uh, and then the third year is where you can make some profit. And I thought, geez, three years to start making a profit? That just seems seems like a, a, a long way uh, from now. And I decided to become a team member first. So I was working in an agent's office. And my goal from the very beginning was to come up with a sales process as a producer where I could write 100 policies per month. And I just figured that if I could do one and a half households a day-ish, then I should be able to hit that goal. 
And we're in a very um, low premium state. So premium was not even a target for me. I just wanted the apps, the, the policies. Uh, and long story short, the, the only lead source that I had available to me was the old leads that we had in our database. So if we had an incoming call, I couldn't answer that call. If a new internet lead came in, which we had a lot of, I couldn't contact those leads. If I did and I closed the sale, I wouldn't get paid commission. So the only commissionable sales for me were people that I brought in from the age leads. Uh, or if I did like some, <laughs> what do you guys do with your mics? <laughs> oh, just, uh, just leaning in, leaning in. Move my mic. <laughs> um, I can see you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways, I, I came up with the sales process. Uh, it wasn't written down. It was just in my head where I could call an old lead and close the sale in one call. And I wrote a hundred policies in my sixth month as a producer. And throughout that, that six month duration, um, is that my dog or yours, Jason? I'm just kidding. That's uh, probably Craig's dog or his rabbit. Who let the dogs out? Who? <laughs> who? 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 Call Mr. Craig. Good one. <laughs> well, tell, tell us a little up, bit I'll about knock that. Him out. How did you? Um, how did you start developing that sales process? I, I know you wanted to. You know, you're you're trying to hit this goal of you know 100 plus uh, uh, policies a month, right? Or items a month, right? Uh, policies, all, whatever. Yeah, policies. It was apps, so but policies, apps, and and so how did you? I mean, that seems daunting at first. So, you, I know you're trying to buy, do it in bite-sized chunks, doing one and a half a day. But like, tell us uh, how you started developing the process from kind of from step one. Yeah, the hardest part for me, the, the first barrier I needed to mentally overcome was that a people don't answer the phone, or at least at the rate that I thought people would. It was just right. difficult to get people on the phone. And once I accepted that fact after a few days, I said, okay, if I want an answer, I better make 10 calls. So I stopped feeling sorry for myself. I, and I decided, okay, 10 calls equals one answer. When I get that answer, what do I do with it? And I would just say, hey, Jason, this is Vlad calling you from ABC Insurance. Uh, we I'm gave glad. you a quote. Like, yeah, do I'm you glad. have, hey, hey. Um, and I would, I would be so nervous on the phone too. It was ridiculous. Uh, I would say, hey, we gave you a quote while back. Do you have a few minutes for me to uh, requote your car insurance? And people would say, no. Yeah, I'm not interested right. or I'm too busy. Just the, the, the normal response. So I was thinking about how do I get people to get past that initial barrier of just saying yes. And I remember there was a time for like two months. I left my Best Buy job to go door knocking and I would sell. Um, I, I worked for Comcast where we would go door knocking and sell cable and internet services. And the guy who I shadowed was the number one sales guy, door to door sales guy. And what he did, which was interesting, was when he knocked on someone's door, they opened, he would always ask them questions that would get the person to say yes, yes, yes. So three yeses in a row. And that just prevented first and foremost, the, the door being slammed on you. And then he, for the most part, had to stuff like people invited him into their house. And that was just crazy to me. So I just followed his process and I was uh, pretty successful as well when I was uh, doing that job. And it was funny to me that nobody else was following that strategy, even though he shared it with everybody. Nobody else was following it. So I just remembered that moment where when I uh, knocked on someone's door, I would ask questions that would lead to a yes. So I thought, how could I do that in my sales calls? So I would start confirming information that I knew was true about the prospect. They would say, yes, yes, yes. And I got past the first 20 seconds. And then it, over time, it became more and more clear in what I would say. But the point is that people started saying, yes, give me a quote. I would get it. I would start getting more opportunities to quote people. And that was like the biggest win is more opportunities to quote prospects. Then the next big challenge was, okay, you quote someone and they would say, yeah, all that looks great, sounds great, but send me an email, I'll get back to you. Right. And that was the next big challenge. How do I overcome that? How do I get people who are at the finish line, but for whatever reason, are just one step away from saying yes? So I tried a lot of different things and finally figured out a way where I could get people to give me their payments information the first call. So now I have a way to quote people. I have a lot of people saying yes, and I'm closing sales in the first call. And the next big challenge was uh, if I'm more expensive, like what do I do then? They're paying 150 for their insurance. I'm coming back at 170 for their auto renters. How do I 
How do I get them to pay $20 more? Well, I can't say we're going to cover you better when it comes to claims. We'll answer the phone 24 seven because everybody says that. Um, you don't call a 1-800 number. You call a, a local number. You always talk to the same people. Like everybody says that. So I, I had like, I'm keeping this super short, but I had a few epiphanies moments where so I tried a few things. Try, basically, it was all through trial and error where I, would, where I would try something. It worked. I would repeat it over and over again. If it didn't work over a few tries, then I would stop doing it. So I got a way where I could quote people, close them in the first call, and even if we were more expensive. And that was like the birth of the script for me. And then other things happened where I added a few elements to it where uh, when it came to like multi-lining, if I was doing an auto renters bundle, easy. Close deal every time, bundle. But when it came to homeowners, getting someone to quote their home and their auto in the first call and switch over in the first call, that was a little complex. So uh, once I figured that out, then that's when I went from doing 40, 50 policies a month to 100 on my sixth month. And then it went up, up and up. And then on my ninth month, I did 152 and I just continued to stay at 150 or, or higher. But the big thing for me that I haven't shared yet is that for me, it was important to get incoming calls. So with every person that I wrote, I executed the most simple referral program that you could ever imagine, but I was consistent with it. And I followed up with the people who I wrote a, a few days after I wrote them. And then seven days later, asked for a referral, gave them a $10 gift card. Uh, in, in fact, I fronted the $10 gift card to guilt trip them into sending me a referral. And then eventually I started getting one call a week, two calls a week, three calls a week. Then it was one a day, two a day, three a day. And then when it got to like my ninth month, that's when I started getting four or five calls a day. And now I have incoming calls and I have a great sales process. Put those together, 150 policies a month. Blows up. And that, yeah, that was that, was that holy grail. And I felt like, dang, I'm onto something. And now it's time to like see what I can do like more than that. And then agents started sending their staff members to our agency and saying, Hey, can Vlad, I'll pay you 200 bucks. If I can have my team members sit there for a couple hours and watch you sell, I'm like, sure, I'll do it. And they would come back to their agency after, after recording the sales conversation, they would implement the same sales process and it would work for them as well. So that's when I started doing, doing workshops in our area and then traveling to other parts of the country. And before I knew it, I was at a full-time business traveling the country, <laughs> training agents, over to a two day workshop on my sales and referral process. So, um, and then after doing that for a while, I converted the workshop business to an online course. So now the online course is what I used to teach in live workshops. So, um, yeah, that's what you see my ads on right now is the one called Close Masterclass. Cool. I love that, man. So let's go back to the, the, um, the initial, uh, getting someone to just even, even talk to you. I love the, um, I think door to door sales is the, I think it's the, the pinnacle of sales. Like if you can get good at door to door sales, you can sell anything anywhere, anytime. Um, 100%. and then, you know, and then the next step up would be phone sales, especially when it comes to insurance and then, uh, you know, online sales makes it easy. Uh, but mm -hmm. let's go back to that door to door. What was, what was it? The dude that you were shadowing was doing, what were those three questions that he was asking, um, and you said for for phones, for phone uh, service, It was right? Comcast. Yeah, Comcast. So it's been about eight years, so I don't recall all the questions. But what he would do is when we had a yellow vest to look more official, a badge, and then he would have a clipboard. Um, and somehow we had the homeowners' names written down for the addresses that we were knocking. And he would basically see who, who they have for their cable provider. Is it direct TV? Is it dish? Like who do they have? And then when he would knock on their door, he would use, usually uh, give their name and then say, looks like you have um, whatever the competitor is for your cable. And then do you also use them for internet or whatever that follow up question is. So usually name who they have for uh, the, the service provider. And then another third question. And that would just get people to say yes, yes, yes. And it didn't seem like a like a cold uh, call uh, or like a cold knock at that point because people felt like, okay, this person knows a little bit about me, even though it's obvious. It's on your roof. You can see what they have. So that, that. That's, what, that's, what he, that's what he did. 
That's so cool. Preparation's everything, man. Uh, yeah. I think that when it comes to sales, I think a lot of us, we just go for it, right? And we don't really put a lot of thought into it. Uh, and I think that the, the, you know, preparing, whether it be practicing, preparing, getting those scripts, all of the above, right? All the above is the preparation that it takes to, to really refine sales. Um, so what was it, what, what was it really, uh, past that? So you would get that. So the first step was, uh, leading the yeses to get the, the, the quote, right. Um, yeah. The next process that you said that uh, you started really refining was those one call closes. What were some of the uh, tactics and strategies that you would use for for that step? Yeah, so I wouldn't reveal the price in the beginning of the call. So if say I had even if I had a quote already prepared, I would save that price until I've given them a home and auto quotes. And then at the very end, when I'm giving them a quote, I would say, uh, Jason. Like if I knew it was $200 a month for your auto and renters together, instead of just saying, all right, Jason, it's $200 a month for your insurance. What do you think? If I tell you that. I'll think about it. Which, yeah, you'll think about it. Um, yeah. Or what most people would do is they email say, do you me. want me to email it to you? I can do that. <laughs> um, and Bob. But instead, <laughs> right. What I would do is first give them a higher price, like before the discounts. So if, imagine if I didn't multi-line the vehicles, um, didn't do the multi-line multi-car discount. If, if the good driving discount was it applied, whatever other discounts, how much more would their policy be? Probably another hundred bucks or so. Um, I know some carriers give you the price before the discounts, others don't. So if I know it's $200 a month for your insurance, auto renters, instead of saying, all right, Jason, it's $200 a month for your auto renters. I say, all right, so Jason, after finalizing your discounts, your price came back to be surprisingly really low. Before all the discounts were applied, your price looks like it was around 300. I don't give them the exact price. I just say around $300 per month. But because you don't have any accidents, no tickets, you're uh, bundling your home and auto or renters and auto, your price came back to be only, and the keyword is only, only $200 a month, which is actually a, a really good price uh, for the coverage that you're getting. So there are two ways you can get this started. And that's the key where I give you the price and I go straight into giving you the two options on how to get started. So there's two ways you can get this started. The first option is you can make your first month's payment today and your coverage begins immediately while we're still on the phone. And I can help you with the cancellation process with Geico so you don't have to worry about that. I'm remo removing that as an obstacle. Um, and then I know another obstacle people mentally have is like, what about my ID cards? What if I get pulled over? Um, I just say, well, and I'll also email you the ID cards. You can print them and the physical copy will come in the mail. So that's the first option. The second option is we can wait till your regular payment day. Do you normally pay on the first of every month? And I look at their X date. If you pay on the first or if your X date says on the first of the month, then you probably paid around that time. So I'd say, Jason, you pay around the first. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we can wait till the first of, and I give them the first of the next month and we can start your coverage then. What, what do you prefer to do? Or what would you prefer to do? Start now or wait till the first of next month? Now it's not an option of, do you want to start with me, but when? So most people, I want people to say, I'll start on my regular payment day because cash flow wise, it's easier for them. They know mentally my auto bill comes out on this day every month. I'll, I'll just keep it simple for them. I'm removing that as a, as a barrier or an obstacle. So uh, if they say, yep, I want to start on the first, then I just change the effective date from today to that day. And then different carriers do this differently. So you would basically set up their policy to start on the same day that they typically make their payments. So for some carriers make it easy. Others have uh, discounts where if you quote them seven days before, or if they start seven days later, there's a, a few discounts uh, available. So the exact script that I just shared will vary from carrier to carrier. But the point is this, you want to give them two options on how to get started. And then I don't like to ask for their odometer reading until I have the payment information. I don't ask for the lien holder information until I have their payments information. I don't ask for anything that doesn't change the price until they have committed with their payments information. Because you know, if you ask someone for their odometer reading, they're going to say, when my husband comes home or when my wife comes home, Right. I'll get that information and I'll call you. And then you never hear from them. Yep. So instead yep. what I'd rather do is get their payment information, get that commitment, and then I'll send them a message of what I need from them. I need this, 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 and that from you. And then they can send me that information. So that's the, that's the 
asking for the sale part in my six step script. That's step five right now. And then um, usually just that one time is not quite enough to get the sale to close, especially if you're calling an old lead. It's natural for people to just be hesitant and say, let me think about it or let me talk it over with my spouse or they'll always give you a, a objection. So if you can, if you don't stop at that objection, but you overcome that objection, usually that second or third ask is when you'll close a sale. And I think that's the part that a lot of people uh, miss out on is they, they, they can go perfectly through the, through the script. They'll ask for the sale exactly as they're supposed to. And then they just don't overcome that first objection that comes up. But if you do that, then you'll close a lot more business because if that person is totally fine with switching over to you, the prospect that you're talking to, um, like they just need a little a, a push. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's that's the, the the fifth step of the script is asking for the sale. That's how I got people to switch over in the first call. And I should say the, the other thing to keep in mind is if if your value proposition is price, if you're saying we're saving you money on your insurance, and that's the main thing that you're leading with. I just haven't found that to work really well. Maybe it's because where I'm from, we like we weren't really competitive on rates. So I had to sell on value. I had to separate myself from the competition. So when people were switching over, they were paying either the same amount or more with me. So it's important that like a lot of people won't switch you switch over if it's $10, $20 more per month, mm -hmm. especially like your, your premier clients who Ten twenty dollars is not going to make a huge impact on their on, on their budget. They'll just say, "Look, I'll keep my home, my three rentals, and my four cars with my company right now. I'm not going to switch over for a fifteen dollar a month discount." So you have to bring more to the table than just a better price. And I think that's where the second step of the script it becomes so key is you have to separate yourself from the competition. So yeah. it's not just you got to be slick with the way that you ask for the sale or you got to be slick with how you overcome objections. What you do way before that in the call will influence if the person's going to move forward with you in the first call or not. Love Ooh. it. Love yeah. it. That's so awesome, many great man. things in there. Yep. Vlad, you just dropped Drop knowledge in. bombs. Have Everywhere. you watched my webinar? Have either one of you watched my free webinar? I have not, and I've not been cookied not. by you, and now I'm terrified right. of being cookied by you. <laughs> but I'm I'm going to. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Do, whatever you do, do not <laughs> search for insurancesalab.com. Because once you do that, <laughs> you're, 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 you're on forever. forever on the hook. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. there's, there is. It, it's amazing this business. We've talked about it a million times, and uh, Jason and I are both really, really big proponents of having a script because. If you don't have some script or some framework for your salespeople, then there's really no way to gauge effectiveness, right? In this business, it's yeah. so strange how you can make so many calls, do so many quotes because you have to. You have to do volume in order to make any money. Yet, just it's it's flying blind and random, you know, like how yeah. how to do it, and 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 living or dying on that price. And if anything doing distributing or selling insurance that way all it does is set you up for low retention and mediocre results you have to that coach and train and train and train and train and become robots almost at what to say in every situation and it's all muscle memory mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's yeah, interesting you, to me it's it's kind of like um it's kind of like this. You would never have a football team. Here I go with sports analogies. Yeah. And, and he doesn't I know, know anything about sports. Yeah, I was know. just going to do that. Say the same thing, but go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, you'd never have a football team and you don't run any plays. Hey, you guys go out there. Just try to get the ball down the field hey, every day. Just have just, some fun. Just do your best. Just yeah. have some fun. Yeah. Do you yeah. mean foosball? Foosball? <laughs> foosball. Yeah. foosball, Mr. Craig. <laughs> Yeah, but it's crazy to me. I mean, I don't know why anybody uh, would do that. And I think that we're lucky to be in an industry where it is real relationship based and you can have good relationships with people where they'll send you clients and and you you don't feel the need to, to have that script um, sometimes. You know what I mean? But I mean, as we're I mean, look at the last year as we're 
going into different scenarios where we don't have the same foot traffic. I mean, the world has been turned upside down. We got to have some sort of script. We got to have some sort of plan that we can yeah. get better, create predictable results and, and crush it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's huge, man. I believe, yeah, I believe we live in the greatest time in human history. Like there's more people who are writing like a hundred thousand in premium now than there ever have been like i'm talking mm -hmm. about personal lines like more people writing 100 policies a month now than than ever and technology makes that super easy and attainable like, yep. why is tom brady the greatest of all time is it because he was the fastest had the best arm no it's it, he's not the most athletic dude but he he out prepares everybody like it, him and some of the best quarterbacks ever they're not the most athletic dudes out there but they just study the game they understand it they they watch film of themselves and their competition. And like you brought up a sports analogy, Jason, the two things I think about when it comes to sales, because I'm a huge fanatic of basketball, football, and I love how the greats, A, practice their fundamentals every day. Like you see Steph Curry, LeBron James, they have the same routine pregame every single time. They're practicing layups, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're warming up with that. Um, they, they have routines. In the sales environments, the first 15 minutes of every morning should be me and you role playing. You give me an objection. So I ask for the sale. You say, hey, I need to talk it over with my spouse. I need to be able to recite it without even thinking about it. You say, hey, your price is too high. I need to be able to respond without even thinking about it. You say, you know what? Your deductible is is uh, like a, a thousand bucks. I'm grandfathered into a better deductible. You can't match that. How do you overcome that objection? Um, like, I don't want to start with you now. I want to I want to wait till the, the start dates. I, I prefer an agent that's closer to my house. How do you overcome those objections? If you don't have a way to just overcome them right off the bat, then you're not ready for the day. So the mm -hmm. first 15 minutes of every day needs to be allocated to just practicing the fundamentals. And then another part of the week, and I like to spend at least one or two hours a week, just pulling up tape or calls that you've had 100%. and just listen to them. And it, a lot of people, myself included, I hate listening to myself on the phone because you're like, oh, I should have done that, that differently. I should have done that differently. Do I really sound that bad? Um, <laughs> I, I had a agent, uh, a captive agent who did this for two days with this team. He had three producers not producing well. He said, we're shutting down the office for two days. Here's the last 10 phone calls you had. Listen to every call from start to finish. Like after a couple of calls, they looked at each other and said, I don't even know why we're allowed to be on the phone. We're really bad. <laughs> like, they all listen to their own calls. So yeah. um, by doing that, you're you're studying your yourself and what you're doing well, what you can be better at. So there's a lot that I've learned about sales, just pulling it from, from sports. So I'm sure you guys have done the same in that regard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, love it. Love it. Even though I'm not a sports guy, I... I... <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Anybody that's done sports, they're great to be on your team. They're team players. They know how to work to, to, together instead of working solo. Um, they know how to run plays. They know how to train. They understand these concepts that are incredibly valuable to the agency owner. So I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of people that are into sports. Not, I'm not so into sports, but I'm a fan yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. cool, man, dude, this is incredibly valuable. Um, what would be the one piece of advice that you would give any agency owner, somebody coming directly into the industry from God knows where, or an agency owner that just maybe they're flatlining. They really want to take it to the next level. What would be the one piece of advice? Um, I'll cheat and give you two. So perfect. The <laughs> the most important thing, and this sounds cliche, is having the right people work for you. So I would only hire A players. Even if it takes longer, I would only hire A players because a B player could write 30 items a month, 30 policies a month, maybe 40 on a good month, 50. But an A player who you don't have to push, they're just intrinsically driven. They already bring in a sales background. They've closed something before they worked in retail wherever they worked out they have some sales experience they bring in a positive energy maybe they have been on a team before if you can find someone like that who just wants to win and does not need to be pushed if you can find that unicorn 
then like that's the person that you go all in on versus hiring two average people. Because you hire two average people, their payroll might be the same as or, or even higher than that 1A player as far as their base goes, but they're going to produce less. You can have three B players doing 30 policies a month, and then you have one A player doing 100 policies a month. Like, what would you rather have? I'd rather have that one person because the next person I hire, guess what? Now they're going to be looking at the A player yep. and saying, I'm doing 20 policies a month. I suck. I better step up my game because uh, Craig here is doing 100 policies a month. So the first and most important part is only like 500 hiring, or 500. Uh, only hire You're not doing players. anything, Mr. Craig. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> you, know, you personally? Oh, I'm not doing business. anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the first thing that I would that I would say. Uh, and like, it's one thing to say; it's another thing to know how to do it. And that's a whole other conversation. And the second thing is know your client acquisition cost, like cost per acquisition mm. for new clients. You gotta know the math when it comes to marketing because if you can, like a lot of agents hit a good stride with a lead vendor, they'll close some business, but they'll look at it and be like, man, we spent a thousand bucks last month on that lead vendor, but we only closed 10 clients or like we're paying 50 bucks a lead. That does not seem like a good number. I, I know that other lead vendor can give me more leads for, for less per lead. And they make mm -hmm. that change. And then like that hopping from lead vendor to lead vendor, not knowing your numbers is one of the dumbest things you can do because yep. you got to know how much you're paying to buy a client from that lead source. And if Cost you know that, exactly. If you know that you're going to make $200 a commission when you write an average household and it's costing you $150 to acquire that client, well, guess what? You're profitable right off the bat. So why not go all in on that? I, I'm sure you guys know agents that spend twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a month on marketing, it's not because they're they have a bunch of cash that they've saved. It's just that they've grown up to that over time. They started with low budgets, but they've done the math and they've increased it month over month. So those would be the two things: hire A players only, don't settle for B players, and two, know your CPA. And I will say, I think the misperception of leads in general is that a lead from company A is the same as a lead from company B, and it comes in. A, a definitive price and everything. They don't understand that a all leads are negotiable. It's like the used car sales business. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they're all trying to add bells and whistles, and they're trying to market it differently. And it's like, yeah, you you can. Um, I, I think that's great advice because if you know your acquisition costs uh, and you really dive deep into the lead vendors and stuff and play them against each other, you can get some you can get your cost per policy down pretty low. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, and you, you can give the best lead to a, an untrained salesperson and you're not going to get yeah. conversion. Who are you going to blame? The lead vendor. Of course. And then you right. can give a quality lead, like someone who's not shopping for insurance to a trained salesperson and they'll close a household a day. And you're going to say, geez, that's the best lead vendor. Like age leads are the best thing, but they're they're not. It's just that the salesperson is working that lead is is the the difference maker. So it's not the lead vendor. It's just that the people are not training how to close. Yeah. Often there, we're asking the wrong questions. It's like which, which lead company, which lead company, not which lead company, yeah. what process, what process yeah. do you have behind it and how are you selling it? Yeah. How are your right. people trained? And so uh, just to wrap it, I, I love what you said also about um, them, about agents jumping from a lead vendor to a lead vendor. Like I've, I've used, I've used uh, the lead We've vendor A from for the last two weeks and i've got nothing and it's like yeah, i'm gonna right. switch so then you switch to a different one and you're starting the clock all over again and then in a month you end up closing the stuff from mm -hmm. the first one you're like oh wait maybe they were good and then you, you it's like no stick with one and watch that that acquisition cost drop over the next 90 days and then you know that it's a good one and you can even kind of gauge mm -hmm. it right if you you buy and you you start with with i i, I, I lead company a and uh it's mm -hmm. it's an 800 buck a acquisition cost today well that's okay because maybe in a week it's 700 and then a week after it's 600 then it's 500 then all of a sudden yeah. you're down in that 150 sweet spot four weeks yep. down the road and that's when you know you have a good lead vendor so um most agents 
including myself at one point would eject way too early and actually have no yeah. process behind it either. So, uh, super important. Vlad, mm -hmm. man. So how can people find you on the interwebs? On the interwebs. Uh, so my website is insurance sales lab.com insurance sales, plural with an S lab.com. And, uh, that'll give you a whole breakdown of my sales process, the six step script and one call close. But if you want to see a free demonstration of the script in action, you can just go to insurance training webinar.com insurance training webinar.com. It's a 90 minute video, but it breaks down the whole script from start to finish all six steps. Um, yeah. And you'll be able to, I've had people like a guy called me just a couple of days ago. He said, I was watching the webinar. He said, I paused it because I had a call come in and I used the script that I just learned and ended up closing the sale that Boom. I feel like I normally wouldn't have. And then he went back and finished the webinar. So he went and uh, reached out to share that Love information, it. but I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. That, that is, is awesome. great. Well, so mm -hmm. good to have you on. Uh, that's insurance sales lab.com lab. lab like wow. labrador right yep like the dog yep, yep. lab yeah <laughs> yep. perfect well thank hey, you thanks for having me on yeah, i love for what sure. you guys do you guys are disrupting the insurance industry and i just love how casual you guys are and how you guys are just you know goofy and hilarious i think people need that i well thank <laughs> you vlad Jeez, thank you vlad that is very that very nice. I'm I'm glad we got Vlad. And honestly, dude, you've lit, uh, you've given so many uh, knowledge nuggets today. I think there's a bunch of implementable material in here. So listen to this a few times. Go mm -hmm. visit his website and yeah, at least I sell it. on. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate sell it. on. You. Sell on. I need to have you guys on uh, my podcast sometimes yes. soon as well. Anytime. Hundred percent. Love it. You got awesome. it, man. Well, cool. well great you. meeting you. Thank you. Good to see Likewise. you. Likewise. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye.